What's up guys, welcome to Wasted Space and we're back in Space Engineers with a completely topsy-turvy video today in that I'm going to show you some stuff that doesn't work and then at the end of it I'm going to challenge you to come up with a solution. So yeah, today I was trying to make or trying to solve what I'm calling the search for the cheapest projectile and the idea here is that we're going to make a projectile that does not require gravity or thrusters to launch so that you don't need to worry about timers or power or artificial mass or any of those other bits. So that means trying to find a new way and a new force to use to launch these projectiles out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through my different and unfortunately failed ideas, talk a bit about why and what my thinking was, and then at the end of it I'll show you something really really silly and challenge you guys to come up with a solution. So diving in, this is the first attempt and ironically it's the one that kind of is the most functional of the ideas. So if I jump in here, I can get you, give you a bit of an idea of how things work. Just need to bring the merge group down onto the toolbar. And what's going to happen here is I'm going to start off the rotors spinning. And these rotors are one on top of another. So if I turn these on, you can see that there's a rotor on top of a rotor and they're both spinning in the same direction. What's really odd is you can only ever do this twice. So one rotor on top of another gives a benefit. Any more rotors has no effect whatsoever. Don't know why that is, there seems to be a complete maximum speed at which these can spin, which is about 1.5 times the speed at which one of them spins. Don't know why, but either way, you can kind of guess how this thing's going to work. Basically, as they spin, they travel through the welders, and then eventually I was going to set it up so that it could be timed so that they all released, pointing in the same direction. But in reality, this version, it, it never got that far because there was a bigger problem with it, and that's the velocity of the shot. So let me launch them out and you'll see what I mean. And we turn the merge blocks on and then we undo them to launch it out. And you can see that they just don't travel quick enough to be of any use as a projectile. What they are quite good for is printing very, very quick, like area, denial, minefield kind of setups. And you can imagine that with some timers on here, we could have this, especially with those precise timers I last did the video on, we could have this shooting really quite quickly. But anyway, let's uh, stop that because, as I said, this has a problem and that problem is the velocity at which these things travel. The other thing you will notice, though, and this is a bit of a giveaway for later, you see how that projection isn't lined up? So I moved on from this and I realised that speed was the problem there, needed to get them to go faster, and the easiest way to get them to go faster would be to increase the size of the beam they're on. So we ended up with this version is actually a kind of second attempt at the same thing but it was one of these without the extra layers on it and this has a different problem so this does work but and we've got greater speed no worries as you can see it goes nice and fast apologize to anyone this will make a bit dizzy uh, it's certainly done so a bit to me today playing with all these things that are spinning around but the problem here is that you'll notice that that projection starts moving away from the merge block and it moves away in a way that you cannot correct it back again no matter how much playing around with the projector positions you do, you can never line that up. It seems that there's a maximum length for these beams beyond which the projection is just pushed too far out of alignment. So while this again works, and I'll turn it on, I think we've got a few projections built on there already, so this works and in fact gets quite a lot more force on its launch, as you can see, those things are coming out quite a lot faster. They're travelling at about 75 metres a second, I know from playing around earlier. It's, it's still not great because we have this projection problem, so I then ended up making an even bigger one to see whether or not changing how the welding of the projection worked would help. So as you can see here, we've got the welders actually on a static location and the projection spins around with it, but this has exactly the same issue. The only thing this thing manages to achieve is that this thing will launch projectiles at 105 meters a second, simply because that arm is so much longer. But that projection you can see on the end there, moving around again, cannot be aligned up in such a way that it will print while this thing is spinning. The only solution would be to stop it every time, print, and then start it back up to take the shot. And that's a little bit, it's a little bit ineffective for the sort of weapon I like to build. So following that, I completely went on a tangent, and I thought, okay, so the goal is to make, is to generate force that doesn't have to go with the object. So why don't I take one of my carts? fit a gravity drive to it so it accelerates really quickly and then at the front of that we can have a merge block and this thing will just travel backwards and forwards down the tunnel kind of as a launch cart you know a bit like the slings you get on aircraft carriers for example doesn't work quite the same way but same sort of concept unfortunately as you'll probably see here i need to go in here and turn the dampers off so that it doesn't slow us down 
What really happens when we turn this on is we get nice acceleration and can you see it jiggling around to the point where it ends up poking big holes in the side of the tunnel and I can't get it to stay stable. No amount of playing with the dampers, no amount of playing with the friction will get that thing to stay stable. So in the end what it does is punch holes in the walls even though they're heavy on it. And it has a bigger issue and the bigger issue with this one and the next one I'm going to show you is how to aim the thing. If you were to turn this around, that cart is going to bounce around like a lunatic inside there and just generally make things difficult. So, kind of ditch that idea again. It wasn't going to work as a small ship because it needs the gravity, so it had to be a large ship. The weight was too much. So then we got really silly and thought, well, I know, let's go and do something that mechanically should work just great, but of course involves rotors, which means that it's space engineers and rotors and it probably doesn't. So the idea here is we've tethered this merge block to our platform by the use of this sort of scissor mechanism that enables it to be quite close up to us and then can be extended to be quite a long way away. And what I was thinking of doing was putting, again, either gravity or thrusters on the back of that so that it got really fast acceleration because it doesn't weigh anything and then it would release at the end because the merge block is kind of tethered, it's not going to go with. Um, and if I press 6 you can see that this does actually function kind of like I want except for that check out that bounce and the bounce in general with this one is going to mean that you're never even slightly slightly slur, never even slightly accurate what I can do with this one and all of these are the same they do all technically work um, so I can come out and put look at it bounce and wobble around if I wanted an intro for my next building on the basics this is it so I can come out here and once it stopped being weird I might actually have the rotor displacement a little wrong. I've been fiddling around with it since I last launched a projectile with it to get it to work. But this thing will launch a projectile and uh, it doesn't launch it particularly fast. It wouldn't be able to be aimed and it's rotor, so it wobbles around all over the place. So we gave up on that idea as well, which left me kind of out of ideas. Um, I quite liked that one. So I went for one last thing, and that was to try and find the Goldilocks sort of value for how long you can make one of these arms and still have it print a projection. And here you are, here it is. It can be eight long before that projection moves to such an extent that it causes a problem. And it is easier and better if you have the welders static because it seems that their fields also move a bit weirdly when they're on a spinning object. But anyway, this thing here will again launch these projectiles and this one will even print them. What it won't do, however, is launch them very quickly. I'll see if this is set up to give you a quick demonstration before I sharp the last of the the silly things the final idea so let's have a look all the projector playing around tools and then yes here we go so i can as you can see this is going to spin around and notice how it's not welding the projection at the top let's turn that on and yep it will just about weld it now that is as fast as it will go and anyone interested the magic number i believe is 25 yep 25 rpm which you'd think is alright, but at 25 RPM you haven't got enough force yet, so I'll try and launch these in a sensible direction. There you go, that one came out, and you can see, I mean, it's going, but I chased them down, and they're going about 45. And 45, well, bleh, yeah, uh, it would probably work better with a timer setup rather than me doing it manually, or even a sensor setup, so when they pass a specific point, the sensor activates. I did try that with this one as well, so there was a sensor on the end, and when this passed, it would launch, so you got a really consistent firing line, but yeah, it was the lack of speed again. This one maybe has a little bit more potential than the rest when I haven't just blown it up, but it, it just wasn't, wasn't good enough, so I ended up going a silly route. So here is the silly thing, and the ship is ugly as sin. I'm well aware it was built around that framework behind us, and built around this. And this is the same sort of thing, but just heavy armor. And not only is it just heavy armor, there's some random blocks that shouldn't even be there there. Let's get rid of those. It's from when the projections weren't lined up correctly. Not only is it just heavy armor, but it's set up with that same welding repair sort of setup. So we can get in here, go to the camera, and I'm sure you guys can already see what is going on here. We can start this up, you can see it through the camera, and then what you do is you drive at enemy of choice and cut him in half. Now, I would have, I could have used one of the kill my ship ships for this instead of just picking on the random red ship again. Uh, I do pick on the red ship a fair bit but I needed something lightly armoured and to be honest this isn't 
a normal video. This isn't a proper weapon. This is just something that's remarkably fun to use. Surprisingly effective, uh, although you do want to beware getting too deep. That slows. Or have we... I've broken it for the first time, I think. We've broken the powered rotor, and so the non-powered rotor isn't spinning. So we can get this working again. Come on, buddy. Up to... Oh, no, 25. See again above above the uh, above twenty five, you will not get the repair side of things working. The blueprints are moving too fast, and it doesn't like it. So there we go, back in action, just using the single rotor, and yeah, it's surprisingly effective, but completely and utterly stupid. So what I'm going to do is put all of this stuff up on the workshop, this whole world. And the challenge for you guys is: can you guys come up with something I haven't yet? Some method to propel a projectile that doesn't purely rely on mass or gravity because we want it to be cheap we want it to be as cheap as we can possibly get a projectile so there's the challenge can you launch it and more importantly can you then set it up in a way where it can be rapid fired can, where you not not rapid fire but you know what i mean where it can be reloaded with relative ease so I hope you enjoyed this one, guys. It's a little bit more of my thought process and a lot less of something that actually functions. But hey, sometimes that's what you get when you try a new idea. It just doesn't work. And I thought maybe you'd be more interested in listening about the failed ideas rather than me throw something quick together that's not actually that interesting. So if you did like it, please hit like down below. It really helps me in the channel out. Otherwise, I'd be really interested to see what you guys come up for this, whether you've got suggestions down in the comments, something to stick on the workshop. I mean, I love looking at your creations, and to be honest, it's a lot of your creations that end up inspiring me to new ideas. So, yeah, please hit me out with them, whatever you've got. And if you find a solution to this, then good on you, because I'm, I'm pretty stumped at the moment. I've not given up, but I've definitely given up for today. So there you go. As the last of the red ship starts to fall apart from this silly, silly, silly machine, I will say thanks a lot for watching, guys. I'll catch you next time.